We will talk about jihad. We will believe in jihad. Jihad is part of our religion. They will kill us all. We will die, but we will never leave jihad. Islam, true Islam, is the Islam that is being portrayed as extremism. That is the true Islam. This man, known by his nickname, Makaburi, was Kenya's highest profile radical Muslim sheikh. I will follow Islam as per the teachings of the Prophet, period. Now, if that makes them want to kill me, they're welcome. I'm, I will be glad to die for my religion. And in April of 2014, Makaburi was gunned down at a bus stop by unknown assailants. Before he died, we spent time with Makaburi, who openly supported the Somalia-based jihadi army, Al-Shabaab. The group who attacked the Westgate Mall in Kenya's capital city of Nairobi in late 2013. Al Shabaab have every right to train their boys. They have a right to defend themselves. They have a right to govern themselves. They start shooting. So people started running. During the mall attack, Muslim lives were spared because their religious beliefs fell in line with the jihadi assailants. But 67 people, including children, were killed. Al Shabaab said the Westgate Mall attack was payback for Kenyan military strikes on their home base in Somalia, a sentiment that Makaburi shared. In the Islamic Sharia, we have revenge. The Kenyan army is doing the same thing to people in Somalia. They are killing innocent civilians in Somalia. Even though Al Shabaab attacked the Westgate Mall in the capital city of Nairobi, Kenya's anti-terror forces put the hammer down in their second largest city, Mombasa, with deadly results for both jihadis and the police. You think it's just a matter of time before the government is going to kill you? Yeah. Yeah, Mombasa, we have a very big population of Muslims. We have a mixed race between the Arabs and the Africans. The Arabs came to Mombasa in 1832. The Arab Muslims who came to Mombasa intermarried with the locals of this area. And that's why Islam spread in different parts of Mombasa. Na watu wataingia katika dini. Dini ya silaha. Over time, a new faction emerged in Mombasa, and militants began preaching jihad. These are people who do not have the direct teachings of the religion they subscribe to. We have never imagined that one day we'll carry AK-47 for the sake of Allah. We know the region has always been used by extremists to recruit youth to assist Al-Shabaab. The jihadi group Al-Shabaab has recruited soldiers not only from countries across Africa, but the United States and Great Britain as well. I'd like to use my time to talk about the blessings of living in one of the lands of jihad. Their mission is just to cause havoc, to ensure that people are not living peacefully. For years, Mombasa's youth have been persuaded to travel 450 miles north to train at Al-Shabaab's home base in Somalia. We have got youth who have come back to the region and they have given us uh, the, the, the story on what has been transpiring and what is going on. Al-Shabaab is everywhere here in Kenya. Most people who've escaped Al-Shabaab go so deep into hiding that no camera can ever find them. But this preacher, named Geronimo Loco Linier, a 
agreed to tell us about the time he spent with Al-Shabaab years ago. I know my life is in danger. And they can, they can kill me any time. And this is the shop where sometimes I used to come and eat. I have a debt there, so I have to pay them. It's uh, almost 2,000 shillings for food only. Geronimo is on the run because he defied this man named Swala Abdullah Saeed. That man is not a good person, he's a killer. I wish I could tell the government to hang this person. He's a killer. Saeed was charged with plotting the Westgate mall attack and with being a member of Al-Shabaab. Even though Saeed is locked up, Geronimo is terrified that another Al-Shabaab member will track him down. It's a Christian who lives here. She's, her name is called Florence. I have four girls and two boys. They are my best friends. Right now, they're giving protection. He told us there are some people searching for him. It's not my problem. I don't know more any details about Al Shabab. Thanks. I cannot go to the house of Muslim. I'm afraid if I go there, they can sell me because they will be after money. So you don't go to the mosque to pray? No, I don't go. I just pray here inside the house. No. Oh, oh. Oh. Christian, Islamists, that doesn't matter. We are one people. Christian is a very good religion because they don't kill. And most of them, they are afraid of God. But we live some of us Muslims, but not all. Some are, are living in a very hostile mood. There are some Muslims who are killers, murderers, and many things. They don't follow the real religion of Allah. There was a time that we were preaching, then one man approached me. Geronimo met Swala Abdullah Saeed years before the Westgate attack. He told me that he is going to sponsor us to Somalia so that we may go and preach there for peace. I went with my nine preachers. When we entered inside Somalia, it became very hostile. After they crossed the border from Kenya into Al Shabaab's turf of Somalia, Abdullah Saeed behaved differently. He killed my four preachers. He, sh he shot the three and he slaughtered one like a, like a goat. Because we, we wanted to show other people what happens to someone who deserts Islam. They forced us into for training. It was a must. They teach us how to use guns, G3, SLR, self-loading rifle, uh, browning pistols, and uh, hand, uh, hand grenades, bazookas. And it was a must that we have to be armed 24 hours. Did you sleep with your gun? Yeah, we have to sleep with it because anything can happen there in Somalia. You can be invaded by other clans because there's no laws there. Whenever Geronimo and the others left the camp, they followed Al-Shabaab's rules for survival. If we just come across anybody and has got a gun, shoot him. Innocent, not innocent, shoot. Oh, I've shot almost five people. You shot five people? Five people, yeah. They were armed with AK-47, so I have to shoot. In camp number 19, they taught us to hate non-Muslims. Because they are kufars, non-believers. Did you want to do that? No. Me with my four preachers, we ran away. We just told them that we were going to hunt. Then we found this uh, lorries transporting uh, illegal sugar from Somalia to Kenya. We got a lift in, in one of the lorries. And when he got back to Kenya, he told prosecutors everything he knew about Swala Abdullah Saeed and the camps. Today, Geronimo is convinced it's only a matter of time before Al-Shabaab finds him and kills him. I'm afraid, but I don't want to die. So if they kill me, it's okay. If they don't kill me, it's okay. Because I know one day I will die. Either old or being assassinated. Because I know those guys are still following me up to now. Uh, 
I have three cases in court. I go to court whenever my, my, my date arrives. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Makaburi's real name is Abu Baker Sharif Ahmed. Islam is not the way that uh, the West and uh, other people portray it. In fact, Islam, true Islam, is the Islam that is being portrayed as extremism. That is the true Islam. Makaburi had to regularly check in with the Mombasa court while he was waiting for his three outstanding cases to go to trial. The first one was uh, robbery with violence. The second case was uh, being a member of Al-Shabaab. And I have another case I'm supposed to have incited the Mombasa youth to do violence. Makaburi said that all the charges against him were false. He even said he didn't sympathize with Al-Shabaab. I'm not an Al-Shabaab sympathizer, but I do sympathize with, with what they sympathize. Al-Shabaab have every right to train their boys. It's their land. They live there. They have a right to defend themselves. They have a right to govern themselves. That is my opinion. Would you advocate for a young person to go train in an Al-Shabaab camp? That's, that's not up to me. Everybody has his own... They can make their own mind, their own decisions. The United Nations believe Makaburi was recruiting young men in Mombasa to fight for al-Shabaab in Somalia. The U.S. Treasury Department even froze his bank accounts because they said he gave money to al-Shabaab. I have been labeled as a terrorist fundraiser. Where is the proof that I have done anything wrong? I have, oh, I have funded al-Shabaab. Where is the proof? There is no proof whatsoever. The Kenya Defense Force said it believed Makaburi was the main link in a chain of radicals who persuaded young men in Mombasa into joining al-Shabaab. But Kenya's army conceded that there was not enough evidence against Makaburi to prosecute him in a court of law. Makaburi is just uh, like any other citizen who may face a case here uh, and there. Uh, he's facing various cases within the law courts, but unless the cause uh, finds him guilty, we cannot say that he's guilty. And we can't really condemn him just because his ideals are different to the ideals of other, other people. This preacher, a friend of Makaburi's, also used to live in Mombasa. His name is Sheikh Aboud Rogo, and like Makaburi, he was labeled an Al-Shabaab recruiter. But Abu Drogo's sermons were abruptly stopped because he was assassinated while driving this van back in 2012. It was played with the bullets on the driver's side. The driver died on the spot. No one was ever charged for the killing. Muslims in Mombasa know who killed him. We know the police did it, and obviously the police will never admit this, but they are not even investigating. Around this time, Makaburi began to believe that he would be assassinated next. The police want to kill me, as they have killed my friend Sheikh Abu Drogo. My life is in danger, but my life is in the hands of Allah, and uh, nothing will happen to me except if Allah wills. <laughs> Then, about a year after Sheikh Abu Rogo was gunned down, Al-Shabaab militants killed 67 people at the Westgate Mall in Nairobi. Sheikh Ibrahim was not at Westgate. He had nothing to do with Westgate, nor was the other people in that car. In the shadow of the Westgate attacks, this preacher, another suspected Al-Shabaab recruiter named Sheikh Ibrahim, was gunned down in virtually the same place as Sheikh Abu Rogo. The person targeted in that car is Sheikh Ibrahim. Sheikh Ibrahim used to give lectures instead of Sheikh Abu Drogo. Sheikh Abu Drogo was killed just a few meters that way. It is the police killing innocent Muslims. This is a systematical assassination of would-be uh, terrorists, extrajudicial killings of terror suspects. I pity my government, which pretends that it's not at war with its own citizens. Muslim citizens. Makaburi has charged that his friends Abu Rogo and Sheikh Ibrahim were definitely killed by the government. There is no evidence that he's producing. The government cannot kill his own people. 
we are here to preserve life and property and therefore we are not in the business of killing and then when people are killed and then uh, they we blame it they, they blame it on the government it is very wrong Sheikh Ibrahim alikuwa yatoka Masjid Musa kutoa darsa yeye ndo alikuwa anatoa darsa baadili ya Abu Drogo yeye ndo aloshika pahali pa Sheikh Abu Drogo Makaburi also used to preach at this mosque called Masjid Musa which has been called a breeding ground for Al Shabab you get many people saying that uh, you have people recruiting boys in, in Mombasa. That's also not true. Even in Masjid Musa, where Sheikh Abu Drogo and Sheikh Ibrahim was preaching, nobody was being told to go to Somalia. The young worshippers who listened to Abu Drogo and Ibrahim at Masjid Musa rioted in front of the mosque after each of them were killed. Even though the high-profile suspected Al-Shabaab recruiters were assassinated, the Mombasa police force's struggle with this tinderbox of a holy place still boils over on a regular basis. Somebody is misusing our youth here. And we cannot tolerate that. Do you think there's radicalization going on here? I believe. As these young men exited the mosque after a set of Friday prayers, they stood in the middle of the street and faced the waiting police. Next, police fired tear gas and their automatic weapons into the air. In the end, the raw anger of the youth members of Masjid Musa was no match for the Mombasa police, who sent a message that radicalism is not welcome. We in the security fraternity, we are working around the clock to ensure that the citizens and, and visitors of this particular beautiful country are happy and are safe. see young Muslims studying the Quran, mm -hmm. what is your wish for them? To be good Muslims. And if that means taking up arms? Initially, if it means they have to take up arms to defend their religion, yes. Or to defend their, their homeland being invaded by outsiders, yes. They have every right to do that. America believes in taking up arms. The West believes in taking up arms. People's lives are being taken innocently, extrajudicial killings all over the world. What, what are those people supposed to do? Are they just supposed to sit, let their lands be invaded, their women being raped and killed, their children being bombed, and they are just supposed to sit and do nothing? Is Westgate terrorism? It isn't, because in the Islamic Sharia, we have revenge. The Kenyan army is doing the same thing to people in Somalia. They are killing innocent civilians in Somalia. And the Somalis, like I said, have every right to defend themselves. And the Quran says, an eye for an eye. So going into a shopping mall, shooting children, shooting women, is in the rule of Islam. If that had been done to your children, you are innocent before that. The Quran is very clear on this, it says, in revenge, there is life. If you don't revenge, they will continue killing. For I'll give you an example. After killing Sheikh Abu Drogo, no revenge was done. That's why they've killed Sheikh Ibrahim. And if there's no revenge done, they will kill me or any other Sheikh. The group of my brother Makaburi is totally teaching other people what is contrary to the teachings of Islam. The rule of jihad says that you have to fight the person who fights you. The people who were at leisure at Westgate, taking their drinks, some doing their shopping, some resting, they are not the ones who went to Somalia and they fight al-Shabaab. So the rule of jihad was broken. My advice to Makaburi and his colleagues, if they want to kill, they should kill in their name and not in the name of God, 
and they should stop involving Islam and Muslims in their killings of innocent people in this country. Is Mombasa a safe place? Mombasa, my brother, is very safe and I can reassure you that uh, uh, the tourists are really flocking in to enjoy their high season. Do you think it's just a matter of time before the government is going to kill you? Yeah. They have to do that because I will not stop preaching my religion the way it is, not the way I see it, no, the way it is. We will talk about jihad, we will believe in jihad, it is jihad, it, jihad is part of our religion, they will kill us all, we will die, but we will never leave jihad. It happened on an April night in Mombasa. They were waiting at the bus stop when a passing car fired at them. Unknown assassins gunned down Makaburi and a friend of his on the same stretch of road where Sheikhs Abu Rogo and Ibrahim met their fate. The police want to kill me, as they have killed my friend Sheikh Abu Rogo. Seven months earlier, Makaburi said this, two miles away from where he was killed. It is the police killing innocent Muslims. This is extrajudicial killings of terror suspects. And just like the murders of Abu Rogo and Ibrahim, nobody has been arrested for killing Makaburi. We don't know who shot them or why. I will follow Islam as per the teachings of the Prophet, period. Now, if that makes them want to kill me, they're welcome. I'm, I will be glad to die for my religion. <laughs>